Unfortunately, most providence would have it. On the 3rd of May 1996, Sheikh Ahmad Didat was struck by stroke whilst on duty and became incapacitated, being unable to move any limbs, unable to speak, and un unable to eat. However, Providence in its mercy retained Sheikh Didat's hearing, eyesight, and ever sharp and alert mind. Sheikh Didat communicates with a unique combination of eye movements, identifying the English alphabets. For the past six years or so, Sheikh Didat is now confined to his bed in Verlum, but still influencing and changing the hearts of people all over the world with the legacy of his books, videotapes, and infrastructure that he left behind at the IPCI. Despite his handicap, Sheikh Didat has dedicated and dictated many books from his bed via the eye communication method. However, it can be said with humility that no other South African or perhaps no other sick person has had so many visitors from all over the world, ranging from government ministers, TV crews, from major international networks, religious leaders of all religious groups, academics, scholars, and ordinary people. In this snippet, we see Minister Louis Farah Khan from America paying a visit to Sheikh Ahmad Didat at his home with his entourage on his recent visit to South Africa. Africa. And last time, I had the privilege of going to meet one of my heroes. Who is that? Ahmed Didat, one of the great champions of Islam. He's a hero of mine. We have shared many days together. He visited me in my home in Chicago, Illinois, and I visited him here and saw him in the days of his strength. And last night, I saw him even stronger. His brain is sharp. He can see, he can hear, he can think, he just can't speak. But his faith is so strong. I came from his bedside so inspired, so uplifted. And I said, Father, when I go back, I will carry on your great work. One of the core programs of the IPCI is what we call human resource development, training of individuals to meet the challenges and the new challenges facing us globally, nationally, and internationally. Here we see a, the last July group of students from all over the country who have come in for a one week intensive training program that was run at As Salam Institute. These are uh, the Duat from all over the country, some as far afield as Botswana, Lesotho, Zambia, and the nine provinces. One of his most memorable visits was when a familiar face showed up and greeted him, this time as a Muslim. When I decided that I'm going to become a Muslim, I woke up, up in the morning and I told my wife that I'm going to convert to, to, to become a Muslim. And I went to the IPCI to go and see you, to tell you. I thought I was going to break the good news to you. And on that day, when I came at the IPCI, they told me, you, you know, you, you were sick and you, had been, you were paralyzed. On that day. Today, they watched the video of that first day when Dawood walked into Ahmed's office demanding answers. It's strange for both of them to look back on that day now. Each man lived a completely different life back then. And six years ago, he suffered a stroke which was known as a lock-in syndrome. Lock-in syndrome is that my father can hear, understand, feel everything. But it is difficult for him to communicate. 
The only food which enters Ahmed Didat's body today is a liquid nutrient called Novocol. He's fed through a rubber tube which goes directly into his stomach. The stomach acids are so strong that the tube has to be changed once a month. And the doctor that changes the tube is an 80 years old angel that changes the tube. No doctor has come here to attend to my father. She is the doctor and she is the mother. Mrs. Didat, with hardly any formal education, tends to her husband's needs as if she were one of the world's top physicians. She took charge shortly after Ahmed was flown to Saudi Arabia for special medical attention. She learned from the nurses in Riyadh and helped them as they did their work routine. 